hi this is game changers live with vicki abelson yes and that's vicki and i'm vicki and uh i'm alone today because uh, <laughs> oh it's such a sad story okay so i'm here alone because um my guest tonight lady kazan was a little under the weather and so i had a choice do i scramble to get another guest or do I just accept defeat and uh, just talk to you alone? So I didn't want to make Pete come all the way from mid to get here. So I thought, you know, I'll just, I could bag it. I could bag it and I could sit and I could watch last night's This Is Us, which I didn't understand last week at all. Well, I didn't finish it, so maybe that's why. I just finished um, the Kaminsky Method. Oh my God, am I in love with that? So anyway, I, I, I could have just watched TV, but the thing is, for three and a half years, I don't know if anybody's, oh, wow, there are people on here with me. Hi, there are people on here with me. Hi, Cheryl, hi, Mitch, hi, Bill. Hi, Billy, hi, Fifi. Um, yeah, so the thing is that I could, I could forego doing a show this week. In fact, my friend Benny Harrison, who I first met playing um, with uh, Mason Reese and the horn section from the David Letterman band from the CBS Orchestra, and who now is playing with Felix Cavallari, who's going to be at the Greek, and, and he flew in today, and he wanted to do the show, he was scheduled. But then Lainey Kazan called me and said she could do tonight, and would it be okay if she did it at Connie Stevens' house? Now, I don't know about you, my thing is frozen, but I'm assuming that you guys are with me. Connie Stevens, I don't know about you, but I loved Connie, I love Connie Stevens! So that was so thrilling. So Pete and I were going to go to Connie Stevens' house, and we were going to chat with Lenny Kazan, and um, and then I can only do it, if, and then I was going to get Connie, of course, to do this another week, and to do Women Right, so trifecta, and um, and then I found out last night, uh, late last night, that actually, I think it wasn't confirmed, anyway, to this morning, that Lenny was a little under the weather, and so we want her at her best, and I could have scrambled and gotten Benny, who was originally scheduled, but he was he had just flown in, and boy, were his, I'm sorry, arms tired. I had to finish it, because I have OCD. And, um, but that didn't seem fair. And then I found out through Benny that my friend Robert Wall is in town, didn't plan for it, but he'll be back on November 6th, he'll be here. So, and Lady and Connie will, will be here in the future. And so, I could have just bagged it and not had a show tonight, but here's the thing, because I'm, a little bit neurotic, a little bit Jewish, a little OCD, all of the above. I haven't missed a Wednesday show since I started doing this, and I haven't missed a um, vodcast, which reminds me of vodka, and I'm sober and I don't partake of that, but I, I don't want to call it a, a video, it's a video podcast. I haven't missed one since uh, I started doing it three and a half years ago. And so it was like, am I going to not show up for people who come every week? Nay, nay. And I had some Chinese food with Harry, and I'm very thirsty. Anyway, I just couldn't do it. There was something wrong about not being here with you guys. Because what if, what if somebody came and didn't see that my post this afternoon or that? Because only like eight of you did. Wow, there's, there's like more people on here right now than when I'm having a guest, a real guest. It's just me. Hi, Murder. Hi, MS, I call you. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, John. Hi, Craig. My cousin Craig's watching. Hi, Mary Ellen. Mitch, yeah. Um, so anyway, you guys, I, you know, I don't really have an agenda tonight. I, I really didn't even know what I was going to talk. It's been a really rough week. It's been a really rough month. Actually, it's October, and it's a new month. And um, at the end of this month, I'm going to be 64. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? This is my question. You're not feeding me yet. Well, yes, you are. You feed my soul. Um, so... I don't really have an agenda, so if anybody has like anything you want to talk about, you can uh, throw it up on the thread. Billy Kravitz suggested that I do a show about the news and what's happening. And I find all of that way too upsetting as it is. Uh, Bernie, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. I hope that you have miracles for your health, and I hope you drop out of the race. Um, but that's about as political as I'm going to get tonight. Billy. Billy says, Connie Stevens must have showbiz stories, you bet, and legends coming out the wazoo. Indeed. She worked with so many people, along with Liz and Debbie, was part of that anything, yes. Connie Stevens, gorgeous, stories, fabulous actress. I'm looking forward to it. 
and I love Lamy. And speaking of the Kaminsky method, I, not, uh, I, this is kind of a spoiler. Well, but I, I was binging the Kaminsky method, and then the last one, Lamy Kazan was there as a big surprise at the end of that episode. So I was so thrilled. Um, hi, Michael. Hi, Robert. So anyway, so it's been a rough week. I. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, exposed to something that bit me uh, last week, and um, I was really kind of freaked out about it because I didn't know what it was, and it bit me on the ass in my car on my way home, and I didn't know if it would ever bit me, I brought home, so I, in my nice Jewish paranoia, have been completely out of my mind. Uh, washing and drying everything, vacuuming everything, freaked out, even got an exterminator. I mean, there, there are no bugs in my house, but I got an exterminator. Anyway, I went to the doctor today because I'm out of my friggin' mind. And of course, everything is okay, um, and I'm just nuts. But um, yeah, that was enough to make me crazy for a week. And Zoe Moon, my, my girl Zoe Moon, for those of you who are into astrology, if you are not on Zoe Moon's page, get on it. Zoe rescued... Uh, a mom, a cat, and five feral kitties. And um, she decided that she was going to get them all their shots and get them neutered and, and care for them. And, and so she was trying, you know, you know what they say about trying to wrangle cats? Well, she literally was wrangling feral cats. And it was a two-week chase. She tore apart her entire duct, duct system in her 100-year-old home because the kitties were getting in there and she was trying to rescue them. And so her and her fiance, James, have spent the last two weeks chasing cats and getting two at a time, three at a time in the bathroom and then them running away and then chasing. Anyway, she's got all five of them. Is it four kitties and a mama or five kitties and a mama? I think it's four kitties. And anyway, she's got them all now. They're all in her bathroom, tearing it up in a cave. And she has to keep them for three, three more weeks, I think it is, because they're not old enough to give them their shots. And she's like such a good person. She tore up her whole house. She can't use her, her air conditioning or her heat at, until she has the ducts fixed, because there was asbestos in there, because it's 100 years old. So that's going to cost her a fortune. So she's done this for these stray cats, because she's just a really nice person. So she's been going through that. I've been going through my little bug debacle, which turned out to be bogus, because I'm and, um, well, I did get bit in the ass. There was that. Um, and Pete got bit, too. That was the thing. It wasn't just me. So um, so we both got bit, and then we were both itchy shit the next day. I also, this week, since I saw you guys last, went to the Hollywood Bowl and saw Rod Stewart and Jeff Beck. Except it was a lot more Rod Stewart and a little bit of Jeff Beck. Jeff came out and did the last 20 minutes, I would say, and that was not nearly enough for me because I went to see him. But I love Rod Stewart. A little Vegasy now. He's been doing Vegas, and so the show, big spectacle, and it was very visually stunning to look at. And he's adorable, and he did all the hits, and that was really great fun. He had, like, I don't know, a gazillion girls in little short sequin dresses who could play their asses off and sing, and that was very nice. Um, but I was there for Beck, and Beck delivered. And it was interesting because when Beck came out and uh, Rod joined, to, you know, they were on together, then Rod was the rock boy that I know and love. There was no more Vegas schmaltz. He was, he was singing from the guts. And um, that was really quite something. Um, and I went to a couple of screenings. What did I see? I'm trying to remember. I'm like, I went to a screening um, on Monday. It was supposed to be um, Billy Bob Thornton and Goliath, only Billy Bob wasn't there, so um, Cindy Beagle and I ducked out um, after the first episode. I'm sorry, I tried with Goliath. I, I went to a screening of Goliath like three years ago just because I wanted to see if Billy Bob was kind of as wacky as I thought he was going to be. And you know what? He's not. He, he was like the loveliest guy. I was so impressed with him. So I wanted to go back and see him again because I really like him. It looks like I'm losing. <laughs> I'm, I'm boring, huh? I'm losing you guys now. Oh my God. So we'll keep this short. So anyway, um, maybe my movie reviews aren't doing it. Um, but in any case, um, I also saw Eddie Murphy uh, this week. I went to a screening of Dolomite Is My Name. Wow, was that fantastic. He was amazing. Wesley Snipes amazing. The whole cast amazing. It's fabulous. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, uh, hi, John Green. Did I say that already? Um, 64. I don't even look 46. Thank you. See, last year I was 63 and they put a, a 36 on the cake. 
So last year I was only 36, now I've graduated to uh, 46, but that, I would take 46, yeah, 60 points. Yikes. Um, but anyway, um, I don't really, like I said, I, I just had to do this because I'm nuts and there's something about continuing a streak. It's like I've been, excuse me, I've been writing, that was a burp, which is lovely to do on the air. I've been writing for, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how many days because I always get it wrong. Um, I've been writing every single day for at least five minutes for, um, this is, you wanna talk about the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over. Okay, no, this is for a good cause though, but I've been writing every single day for 6,741 days. Today would be 6,742, because I committed to it. I don't know how many, that's like 13 years ago or something? 14 years ago, I don't know, it's a long time ago. And I do it every day. So I try to do the same thing with eating right and exercise, and I end up on day one a lot. I used to work out every single day, not so good, but I, I need to do that. So. I'm looking for somebody to be accountable with on the eating and the working out thing. So if you're interested, let me know. Um, uh, also, um, Pete, my, my good friend, hi David Lucky. <laughs> David, it's just me, where are you? You could be joining me here at the table. Rob, hi Vicki. Can't wait to hear all these great stories from Connie Stevens. Me too, I can't wait either. Hi Christopher Celio. We know each other from the China Club back in the day. Um, but anyway, um, I, uh, hi, David Lucky. I love you. I miss seeing you. Um, and this is back. Oh, look, I'm getting some love now. I'm getting some laughs. I'm getting some loves. I'm getting some wows. Um, I don't remember where I was going. Where was I going? I don't, oh, um, I know where I was going. So Pete George, my, my wingman, is fabulous and has been such a great person to do the show with. It's been really fabulous. And we are continuing, just that Pete is the rock and roll comedian, for those of you who don't know, and he needs to take time off once in a while so he can actually do some comedy with a little rock and roll. And so he's got some dates coming up, and so I'm looking for people who are interested in being my wing person when Pete's out of town. Because I need somebody for almost the whole month of December, uh, the first week of January, one week in October, one week in November. Linda Apsey said she's willing to do some. So I would just really love to have um, a few people that are interested in doing it when Pete can't be around so that I don't end up having to do this. Because if I was here with Connie Stevens and Lainey Kazan and I was running up and down behind the camera, that would look really silly. So let's see what Billy says. Now I'm back. Uh, I was gone? Was I gone? Oh, wow, there's like a lot of people on here now. Okay. Um, 64, um, all those who say different are liars. Everybody, everybody, everybody's in their 60s, Billy says. <laughs> really, is that so everybody else is liars? Well, I don't know. Um, okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Well, see, we're losing people now, Billy. We start talking about age and people are gone. Anyway, I'm doing this other kind of interesting thing. I, um, I had to do this audition tape today. Don't ask, it's like this dancing show. I'm not a dancer, but I got um, asked to, to um, to submit for this show that has dancing involved, which is crazy for those of you who know me because you haven't seen me dance. And Michael Morata, you're my dancing partner and I haven't danced since about then. But anyway, I just asked Harry if he would dance with me. I was, dis I was disgruntled and didn't want to do a little 20 second dance video, but um, I decided to, to comply and I asked Harry to do it with me and he was so disgruntled so with no rehearsal in one take and my back to the camera, we did a 20 second video. That was really kind of pathetic. But you know, what are you gonna do? It doesn't matter. Um, all right, Linda, I said, Linda, you have to get a new computer. I, I am so loud. Is anybody else having trouble hearing me? I speak, I speak so loud that it's ridiculous. I didn't set up a microphone because it's just me without a guest and I'm loud. But Linda, if you're having trouble hearing, I promise you, it's not me. For a few seconds, oh, I don't know. For a few seconds it was, it was low? I don't know, Linda, I really don't think it's me. I think it's your computer because it seems like every single week you have trouble and I play back on half volume and it's loud. So I don't know, is anybody else having trouble hearing? Tell me, I'll speak up. 
because I'm not hooking up a microphone now. I, I, oh my God, there's like, hi everybody, I don't know who's out here because it's not showing me on my computer. I don't have my um, iPad set up, so I can't see who's joined. Um, it's not that old, and I hooked it up to my Sony Bluetooth speaker. I don't know, try your earphones, because I really don't think that they're, hi Patrick. Um, oh, you've got your volume cranked as well. Well, I did put the, the camera way back this time so that you wouldn't see all of this. Um, so maybe it's not loud enough. I don't know. It should be. But um, this is just for this week. I didn't set up the microphone. I'm sorry. I didn't think I would need it. I project like baby Jane. So do, does anybody want to talk about anything? I don't know, because I wasn't going to stay on very long. I've already been on for 16 minutes, which is about 10 minutes longer than I planned to be. Hi, Christina. So Christina can hear me. Yes, Christina. I know, right? Hi, Christina. <laughs> I miss you, and it was good to see you and, and Nick recently. I'm glad that you guys were here last Tuesday. Um, for those of you who um, have not seen the video of Women Who Write from last Tuesday, we did a celebration of Suzanne Long's life, and I gotta tell you, today, um, doing something else, I was watching a video from 2013 when Gary Marshall and Mitch Weissman were in the living room, and Suzanne was being interviewed about Women Who Write and about uh, that day, and. She and I danced in the back of the room that day, and I was, I'm going to get really for clumped here, and I was looking at her, looking so young and so vital. She was cancer-free at that point. It was after the, the second bout and before the third bout, and she looked wonderful and beautiful and full of life and vitality, and um, I know that uh, her, her spirit lives on, but man. Anyway, last Tuesday, we celebrated her life because she passed tragically, uh, way too young at 56. And here to celebrate her was Anthony Fedorov from American Idol, and he sang his song Enough is Enough, which I hope becomes an anthem for our political science about putting our weapons down. It's really an incredible song that Suzanne and I uh, were in Anthony's video of that song. Uh, Suzanne down front and center, singing with all of her gusto and might, and me in the back mouthing the words that I didn't know, hiding. Um, but anyway, um, Anthony was here. Judd Nelson came to uh, uh, and read a, a, a couple of things that he wrote, one for Suzanne and one to Suzanne. That was off camera, though. He's a little camera shy for a, an actor. Um, Jeff Bazane, uh, Suzanne's love, was here and sang a song. That was all the special stuff for Suzanne, but on the bill last week was Anna Montgomery, who was unbelievable, and one of her songs, I have not stopped listening to I'm, 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 I'm so in love with it, and I love her. Danny D'Andrea, Danielle D'Andrea, with her husband Kyle D'Andrea, fucking tore the house down. This girl should be a superstar. She's amazing. She sang with, with Joe Cocker and with Jackson Brown. I mean, she's had a really you know great career, but on her own, oh my God. And uh, Mike Lang, who I saw at Disney Hall, who was a concert pianist. Well, he's not a concert pianist. He's played on 2,000 film scores. And he's played with John Lennon and Aretha Franklin and Barbara Streisand and Frank Zappa. Crazy combination of people, Willie Nelson. But he was just fantastic. And his girlfriend, Deborah Pearl, sang a song with him. And then Jeff Young, who is Jack Monroe's keyboard player for like 25 years. And he's amazing. And then he and Danny did a duet, their duet of Que Sera, Sera, the Sly Stone version, which, if you haven't watched this video, it's on my wall. It's up near the top because I did a watch party last night. It is unbelievable. Just fantastic. And likewise, if any of you didn't see the show last week, Game Changers, with me, Vicki Abelson, and Pete George, um, Teresa James and Terry Wilson, uh, who were nominated for a Grammy Award this very year, 2019, for Best Blues Album, Best Contemporary Blues Album. We were in their house, and uh, piano and guitar, and they did about six songs in the, in the show, and were fantastic, and so fun, and great stories, road stories. So if you haven't seen that, check that out. It's on my wall. I'll put some, some links up for you guys. Um, Oh, so yes, the sound is lower, Patrick, because I'm, I don't have a microphone. And so even though I'm only 15 or 20 decibels lower than usual, um, it, <laughs> yeah, that's the reason. Um, what's Halloween like in LA? Billy, let me tell you, I was just in 
CVS today looking at the candy. I always buy like 10 pounds of candy, and if we get two trick-or-treaters, five tops, and then Harry and I eat the candy for a year, so I don't want to do that. So, but if I buy a little bag of candy, then everyone will come. So what's the solution? I don't know, give pennies? No, I hated people who gave pennies. Maybe you give dollar bills now. I don't know what you do. I, there, was, there are people in, the, in my neighborhood who give like the jumbo sized candy bars. My kids used to love them in their house. My neighborhood is great. Um, we live on a kind of a deserted little thing here. And that's, it's not deserted, but a quiet little part. But there's another little area right near where I live where tons of kids go. And downtown in my town, um, they have like a parade and like zillions of kids go. And every store gives each kid one little Tootsie Roll or one little something because there's so many kids. But it's really lovely and um, that's really fun. But um, Halloween in L.A. isn't quite like, for me, um, Halloween in New York, which was my favorite holiday of the year. And I always got extremely dressed up and had a ball. Um, I, when I was running the Rock and Roll Cafe, I dressed up as my partner, Steve Principe, one year with all of his clothes and his muscles and his beard, and, and that was great fun. Anyway, um, I'm looking forward to Halloween. It's right uh, um, after my, it's too hot to wear costumes, Lily is saying, it, it, uh, Linda's saying, it is hot to wear costumes, oh, sometimes, sometimes it's not too bad. Um, but I always used to really dress up, even my first few years here, um, hi Bess. It's nice to see you, Bess. I haven't seen you in a long time. Hi, Paul. Um, but anyway, um, I'm just talking shit over here. I, I really got nothing to say. I do have a couple things to say. Some shows, I get so engrossed with my guests that I don't give a shout out to um, the people who support me and who make this possible. And one of those people is my hairdresser. And you may notice that I'm extremely blonde. Um, I've gone extreme. I, I sort of have a, a Ziggy Stardust thing going on. Um, I want the Jane Fonda clue has turned into the Ziggy Stardust, I don't know what, um, shag kind of thing. I love my hairdresser, Nicole Venables of the Ruby Begonia Salon in Studio City. She's amazing. And you know, we, we gotta try, I mean, I have to try things. I have to, I have to jump off the cliff. Speaking of jumping off the cliff, if you haven't read my book, Don't Jump, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, and My Fucking Mother, what the hell are you waiting for? You should do that. Anyway, Nicole has this great hairspray. This isn't the one that's Fuck Off Hairspray, which is really one of my favorites, because I don't know what I did with it, but, but um, here's another one of her hairsprays, Ruby Pagonia, and uh, her products are excellent. She's an incredible hairdresser. She does the tresses of Megan Mullally on Grace, Lily Grace, and she also does Man and Plant. She's phenomenal. And my other sponsor is um, Rick Smolke, who is one of the greatest people on the planet that I know. If you ever need anything printed, Rick, Rick was giving swag away at Women Who Write for years. Every month I would give away pads and calendars and, and, uh, and tissue boxes. Uh, he made my tissue boxes after Mackenzie Phillips was here and made us all cry um, when she read from her book. And he's made my two-sided business cards, which are beautiful and lovely, and my bookmark, which is pretty phenomenal. Everything color coordinated, of course. But anyway, Rick will take excellent care of you. Um, he's with Quick Impressions in Chicago. And even though they're in Chicago, you can be anywhere, and they can send you stuff. And they do it really fast, and they do it really beautifully. And they, uh, Rick has a warm and good and generous heart. He's very philanthropic. Exciting things that are coming up. So I went and saw um, Mike Finnegan, the keyboard player, was um, on this show a few weeks ago. And Mike Finnegan uh, played on Jimi Hendrix, Electric Ladyland. If you didn't see that show, wow. Um, he, uh, he's played with Bonnie, with Bonnie Ray recently for years. He, he's an incredible, uh, he's like maybe the premier Hammond organ player in the world. He's got an insane voice, a phenomenal voice. So I went to the right off room with my friend Crystal Husband, hey sister, and, uh, and playing with him that night was James Gadsden, who is um, maybe the number one session drummer in the world, but the guy is incredible, and what a voice he has on him. And also that day um, uh, on bass,
base, Abe, I'm going to get Abe's name, the last name, um, Abe, um, Abraham Labriel, Labriel, Lab, wait, Abe, Abe, <laughs> Labriel, he is the bass player from heaven, unbelievable bass player with a personality to match, he's probably the number one session bass player in the world, and um, he said that he would do it too, but uh, anyway, James is going to be here next week, and um, on the 16th, Marcus Eaton, who um, just composed the music for the David Crosby documentary and will be live in the living room on October 29th for my 64th birthday. Allie Willis is going to be in the house and singing, uh, doing a sing-along of September, her song September, and uh, I'll Be There For You, which something big is happening with I'll Be There For You I just read about. Allie uh, wrote the, the uh, music for The Color Purple, and they're about to do a movie version of the Broadway play, which I just saw, uh, which I didn't just see, which I saw a couple years ago. And um, Cynthia Erivo got three standing ovations in one number in that song. I was just um, invited to a screening of that tomorrow night. Uh, she's in Harriet. And the composer of that film score, Terrence Blanchard, is going to be here in, in October. And um, he did all the compose, almost all the Spike Lee films. He's an amazing composer. Um, uh, and, and Lainey and Connie Stevens will be on. And um, Robert Wool will be here on, October, on November 6th. And um, yeah, like great people, great stuff. It's exciting. Today you just got me. Buy a vowel. <laughs> to buy it out. Okay. Um, what's my favorite song? What's my favorite song album? Billy is asking. Um, hmm. Boy, that's a really tough question, but I know uh, Jefferson Airplane's Surrealistic Pillow is one of my favorite albums, and Electric Ladyland is one of my favorite albums, and uh, The Jeff Beck Group is one of my favorite albums. Uh, I can't believe you're, that I'm answering this. This is crazy. Phoebe Snow's first album. Um, uh, buy a vowel. Why am I buying a vowel, Linda? I don't know what that means. Why? Oh, because I was trying to say Abe's name. Yeah, I was struggling for that. Okay, so I've now been talking for 27 minutes about absolutely nothing. Nobody's asking me questions. Well, Billy asked me a couple questions, and I thank you for those. I'm really thirsty. Yeah, Chinese food before a show is not a good idea. So anyway, I'm thinking that I should probably wrap this up because I'm boring. I'm boring like, no, I am, right? I'm, am I boring? <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else exciting that I've done this week that you might give a shit about. Um, oh, Lashon Tova to all you Hebrew people out there. Um, it's, the, it's the Jewish New Year, and do you know what I did? For the first year, I did nothing. Harry and I didn't even have challah and wine. Well, I don't have wine, grape juice. I didn't like the candles. I'm a really bad Jew this year, so I will have a lot of... Uh, to to, to think about on Yom Kippur next week. And we'll have a lot of amending to do, a lot of penance to do. Good choices. Oh, thank you on my albums. Thanks, Billy. Um, I'm not boring. Billy, I love, you know, I just want to give a shout out to Billy Kravitz. He's, um, Billy and I have never met in real life. We're social media friends. We started on Twitter, I believe. Billy's one of those people that retweets everybody, uh, does a follow Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for people, is the most supportive social media person I have ever seen. And I am so grateful for you, Billy. Um, I, I aspire to, um, to have the, gra the graciousness that you do and the generosity of spirit that you have. It's really lovely. Um, hell no? Hell no. Hell no what? Hell no I'm not boring? I'm gonna, t I'm gonna go with that, Rob. Um, Patrick, before you go, here's a question. Why does it seem that entertainment out of LA isn't the quality it used to be? Writing, acting, business, business moguls. Hmm. Do you mean films? Um, if you mean films, I kind of agree with you and I kind of don't. I mean, I've seen some really good films. I'm trying to think of the last great film I saw that blew my fucking mind. Um, Dolomite is My Name is really an excellent film. I, I recommend that. Um, Aw, oh, Billy's blushing. Don't go. This is good to do, Vickers. You'll, di you'll dig and find stuff to talk about. Talk about your writing group on Tuesdays. Hmm. Well, should I talk about women to write? 
For those of you who don't know about women who write, you do not, first of all, we're not all women and we don't all write. And, um, and it also includes men. It's been including men for a number of years because I made it up so I can change it. It it's, includes men because Tom Bergeron wrote a book 10 years ago and asked me if he could come read and um, he was put on a dress. I told him he didn't have to, he did, and the rest is history. And actually, for all the years that I did Women's Right in my home, um, I was married for some of those years, and my husband was not allowed to come down the stairs and be part of Women's Right, because there were no, women, no men in the audience. But that all changed when Gary Marshall came to, uh, to call, uh, when he had a book out. With a, another one. We've, we've lost so many good ones. Anyway, when Gary Marshall came, um, a young guy uh, got in touch with me and said that Gary was his lifetime hero and would I please let him come. Actually, it might have been Mitch Weissman who was his lifetime hero. I think it was Mitch. And Mitch is the original fake Paul, the real fake Paul from um, Beatlemania on Broadway in the movies. And um, he was here opening for Gary Marshall and this young guy wanted to come and see them. And I decided to break the rules. And then since then, we've had men in the living room every month. And uh, we have men shooting, and we have men performing, and we have men sitting amongst us, and it's great. And so that happens the last Tuesday of every month. I call it a literary salon, but we really don't read from books very much anymore. I, I do read from my book, Don't Jump, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, and My Fucking Mother. And it's very funny. Um, um, I read from my book, but um, not too often. Uh, the readings became more static, and it became more fun to uh, just have people talking with us, it seems, and um, playing music for us. So we've had a lot of music, and that's been fabulous. And um, uh, and that happens the last Tuesday of the month, except in November and December. The days get kind of switched around because of the holidays. But for the rest of the year, it's the last Tuesday of the month. If you're in LA, you are invited to join us. It is so much more fun in the living room than it is watching in your pajamas at home, I promise you. The hugs, Penny's Kugel, the kisses, the pictures, it's fabulous. Um, and then the second Tuesday, or third, depending on how many Tuesdays there are in the month, um, there's, a, there's a workshop, a writer's workshop, and that's much smaller and intimate, also in my living room. And there people bring their work, and we, um, we, it's a very supportive and a very motivating and inspiring group, and I invite you to join us for that. And so if you'd like to join any of these things, we have a meetup, and uh, it's called Vicki Abelson's Women Who Write. And please join us if you're, if you're interested in it. You can just hit me up on the thread. Um, yes, the workshop. Vicki, we love what you do. You are an inspiration, and we thank you for spending time with us. Oh, Patrick, that's so sweet. I think maybe you better speak for yourself, because I'm not sure everybody feels like you do, Patrick. But, um, oh, thank you, Rob. Getting sweet, sweet things. Um, Linda says, the, li uh, the living room, the other group you have, oh, the writers, yeah, the workshop. That's the workshop, Linda. And, um, and that's a really wonderful, Oh, a wonderful thing to do, no matter what level of writer you are, whether you're just starting out, um, we have uh, a few people in the group that have published numerous books and have written screenplays that have been produced and plays, and, and so uh, we have um, writing professors that are in the group, so it, it runs the gamut of beginner to um, advanced, but everybody um, does great work here, and it's just very loving and supportive. Um, hi, Sharon. Um, morphing into entertainment salon. Yeah, you know, that's, that's right, Billy. It is morphing into an entertainment salon. It is more an entertainment salon than a literary salon these days. It started out everyone had a book and everybody read. And that was really great for when it was. But it just, and, oh, here's a great story. So we started out just doing readings. And less than a year into it, I got a message from Lori Lieberman, who wrote the the original poem that Killing Me Softly came from. She wrote the, the original lyric. And um, she got in touch with me and she said, I I'm a writer and I'd like to come read. And I said, wait a minute, you wrote the words to Killing Me Softly? No, I want you to come and sing. And she's got like gazillions of albums, 30 albums maybe. So Lori Lieberman came to the, li the living room and she was the first person to ever sing. And she did her version of Killing Me Softly, which had come out before Reverse Lack's version. And I gotta tell you, when, when a songwriter sings their own song, there is nothing like it. She tore down my house. 
And then a month later, she was in New York. I used to do women who write both in New York and LA. I did two a year in New York. And she happened to be in New York, and she did it there. I think she did it there first, and then she came and did it here. And Lori's been back. Oh, God. She's the most performed person at Women Who Write over the last 10 years. Um, she came to Big Sur and did it with me up there when we did it with Michael Nesmith at the Henry Miller Library. She's done it. She did it not too long ago in the living room again uh, within the last year. She's fabulous. And Lori's going to be at Carnegie Hall. Uh, performing for a few nights. Um, October 4th, I think, is the first night. And if you go to her Facebook page, what's phenomenal is after 45 years, she met Roberta Flack, I guess today or yesterday, um, which is thrilling. Um, yeah, the woman who made her song, the hit that it is. So that's pretty exciting. So anyway, we started having music back then, and since then, We've had a monkey, a turtle, we've had two monkeys, a turtle, an earth, wind, and fire. We've had Paul Williams. Um, we've had Linda Lavin sing. We've had unbelievable people regale us with incredible music. And that's become a really big part. So in recent months, we've had a few salons that have been all music. And why is that different than a house concert? Why is it different than going to a club? What makes Women Who Write so unique is that it's the morning. It's, we start at 11 o'clock in the morning, which is ungodly, and everybody says, I can't sing at that time. Nikki Dolan's just like, I can't sing it, but you know what, they can. But anyway, what happens is everybody brings food, and because we break bread together first, we meet, greet, and eat to start. And what that does is when you're eating with somebody, it really breaks down your inhibitions, especially when somebody chews with their mouth open. It's not something you want to see, but what happens is people will, uh, people, their defenses come down when we eat amongst each other, and it's an immediate bond, and everybody is contributing because everybody brings food, so therefore everybody feels like they're a part of the day, and they are a big part. And then my living room is not that big, and 40 to 50 of us cram in here, and because we're sitting so close, and because it's daylight and the lights are bright, whoever is up singing or reading or, or speaking to us can see into our eyes. And so that's a really intimate thing that, that doesn't happen in a club. It doesn't even happen at a house concert, because those are usually, they're not, they, there's something just, some house con concerts like it, but there's a vibe about this thing here. We've been a group together, and even though each month different people come back, so there are some people that are here every month, Linda Axie, I love you, who takes the most incredible photographs in the world. But there are a core group of women that come every month, and Suzanne Wong is one of them. Um, and, and then there are new people. Crystal uh, Husband now comes every month. She's been coming for months, and she's become a stalwart regular. Penny Barnett comes every month. Catherine McClenahan. Um, there's a bunch of women that have just been stalwarts. Fantastic. And anyway, so there's the core women that welcome everybody. Oh my God, Elle Latch, who welcomes everybody every month. Incredible. She's, I think she's missed one or two women who write since she started coming a gazillion years ago. Phenomenal. And so these incredible, fabulous core women then welcome everybody else who comes in. And, you know, old timers come back and forth. New people come every month. And it's, really, really warm, inviting, supportive, friendly. And what happens is when the performers are up there either doing music or talking to us or reading to us, whatever they're doing, you know, it's really hard to explain to an artist, to a celebrity, why they should come all the way to hell over here. I'm Glendale adjacent. I'm way to hell, you know, to the east of, of Malibu in Santa Monica where most of them live. And it's hard to give them a good reason to come, but all I know is that I have never had anybody show up and not say that it was worth it. And not only that it was worth it, but lifetime memories are made here for both us in the audience and for the people who perform for us. It's just an incredible warmth and fun, and everybody gets everything. And, you know, in LA, sometimes people are too cool for the room. And they don't applaud, and they don't laugh at the right things, and you know they kind of sit there like this. There's none of that going on here. And plus, for the people that come, and they get to 
spend real time with with the celebrities and with the performers and, and to, to really have a conversation, to really take a picture that's meaningful and not just being filed one after another, but to really have a moment with the person, to get their CD to have it signed, to get their book have it signed. Um, to, but it's more the moments that we spend together, the hours really, because the, the event lasts for like two and a half hours and it's just phenomenal. So if you're in LA, if you come to LA, I just, I can't tell you how enough, enough uh, how incredible that time is that we spend together. And it's, you know, I know it's fun to watch it online. You can stay in your pajamas and eat what you want. You don't have to put your makeup on, but it's really worth the drive. Um, and for those of you that are too far away to come, um, I'm glad that you get to, to watch it with us. Um, yes, the audience is intimate and appreciative, and that's true, Sharon, it's so true. Warren's digging, all right. Um, Linda, yes, we have to do a book of photos. It's something that I, I think we talked about. I know I talked about it with somebody um, doing a coffee table book of the photos because the people that have been in this living room, it's, it's, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. I've actually written, uh, I did a pilot pitch. I, I shot a pilot pitch to, to do a half hour uh, comedy based on the fact that all these people come to this living room where a mom and her kids live and it's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, um, that's off subject. I don't know, what else do you guys want to talk about? We've talked about women are right. We've talked about it's coming up on this show. We've talked about me complaining about my week. I don't know, I'm, I'm still talking and it's like 41 minutes later. Oh, look, I'm getting some love from somebody. Thank you guys, are so sweet. Thank you for um, encouraging me and for sticking in. And we actually, hi Daniel, hi Daniel's my friend from Australia. Hi Daniel, it's nice to see you. Hi Walt, hi Mary Ellen, you're back. Um, it's really lovely of you all to be so supportive and to be here just for me when I don't have a celebrity. I forget sometimes that um, I'm not just hosting everybody else, but I'm some, I don't know, I don't know. Um, who's, ooh, Frank. Hi, Frank. Um, it's nice to be reminded that you come here for me too. You come here for me too, right? <laughs> Say yes, lie to me. I'm so thirsty. All right, so, oh my God, now there's more people. I was just gonna say good night, and then and the numbers are growing. How can I go when the numbers are growing? That does not seem right. What do you wanna talk about? Um, let's see, what's coming up in the next week? So tomorrow, um, you are a celebrity, yeah. It, it, Walt, will you call my mother and tell her that? Um, George, Vicki, how, big does the diamond in the engagement ring have to be before I can propose? <laughs> oh, it's not the size, it's what it does, no. Um, that's very sweet, George. It's not about the size of the diamond, though. It's about the heart of the man, I think. Uh, and you're a lovely man, thank you. Billy, love the salon talk. What goes on there? Celebrity, cool. You know, I'm reading without my glasses. Should I put on my glasses so I don't, was I squinting? Um, definitely core for nice little intimate indie film. Yeah, well, you know, indie film maybe, Billy. I really think it's a series because I think each week um, in the pilot pitch, I chase Steven Weber down the street trying to get him to come. And I'm kind of uh, stalking him. And then um, when, it, it, when it ends, um, he's actually in the living room. And that actually happened. I did chase Stephen Weber for a couple of years before I got him to come to the living room. I chased many people. I chased Mickey Dolenz for about four years. Um, I, I chased Lee, uh, Lady Kazan for about four years. I, I chase people. I'm unrelenting. I'm, 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 Michael, I was talking about you. Michael Murata, my friend from New York during. Michael, I did a, a little dancing video today. Don't ask. I, I am, I, yeah, for this show. And uh, Harry and I danced. And Harry's not my regular partner, um, although I, he's a great dancer. But Michael, if you would have been here to cut the rug for me, wow, um, you know how to spin me like nobody else. Um, Michael and I danced many a dance back in the day. Um, streaming or cable series? Well, you don't think I'm ready for prime time? Is that it, Billy? You don't think that I'm network worthy? <laughs> Actually, network wouldn't really work for me because I'm the foul mouth. Somebody said that, that uh, who was it that, that suggested a show called, 
oh, Bill Burnett, I think, was saying something about the foul mouth Jewess or something. Yeah, that would be me. Um, you did a nice thing streaming Rod Stewart. Thank you, Walt. You know, I have to say, Walt, that, you know, I make a decision every time I go to event, an event. Do I go live so that all my friends can watch with me, or do I just sit there and enjoy it by myself? And the thing is, and even though it takes some work, it's so, I enjoy so much uh, holding up the phone. And what I do, I still enjoy it because I don't hold it in front of my face. I rest my arm and I hold the phone so that you guys can watch with me and then I still get to watch and then we get to watch it together and I really appreciate when people go to concerts and they do live videos so that I can watch with them. There's something about it being live, you know, it's easier to just shoot a video and then put it up later but nobody watches that. These live things are, are much more exciting. So I'm always happy to do that when I go to a show. It's fun for me because I know that I'm sharing. There's something about sharing all of this stuff that's so wonderful. I know, solo stuff. Like sex. It's so much better to share it. Oh, God, where am I going? Where am I going? What am I doing? Um, uh, you're welcome, Sharon. It was my pleasure to do it. Rob was fun. Uh, Jeff was rock and roll. And actually, I still have um, like three more Jeff Beck videos that I haven't posted yet. I kind of don't like to just put up a video because nobody watches it. It's so, it's so much better when you do it live. But I was running out of battery that night and I was afraid if I went live, I wouldn't get to, I had no idea Jeff Beck was gonna do so little or I would have done his whole 16 minutes, uh, 20 minutes. Um, but anyway, so I just shot video. And if I put them up now, um, not live, Who's going to watch them? Nobody watches them. So maybe I'll put them up and then I'll do a watch party with the three short videos I have left of Jeff Beck because they're really phenomenal. I, I got a, a couple of really great solos of his. Um, did you see the new Linda Ron I have not seen the Linda Ronstadt documentary. I, so, I love Linda Ronstadt. And my first um, introduction to her was when she did Different Drum, which is a Mike Nesmith written song, which um, Mike Nesmith actually sang at Women Who Write up in Big Sur at the Henry Miller Library that he produced for me. And it was the first time Mike had played out in, I think, in a big way in my 17 years. And after that, he went on his first tour. And after that, he rejoined the Monkees. And I'm going to say it was all because of Women Who Write. <laughs> yes, I'm taking that credit. Yes, hi, Christina, you're back. Um, no, I, I really want to see that Linda Ronstadt documentary. I know Christina did, as a matter of fact. I adore Linda Ronstadt, and uh, it's really tragic that she can't sing anymore, but thank God we had her for all, singing for all those years, and we've got all those recordings that are just astounding. Um, yeah, I bet I'll love it. I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also excited because, has anybody seen the David Crosby documentary that's out? Um, my friend Jeff Pivar has been playing with David for many, many years through Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and just most recently on David's um, solo tour. And uh, Marcus Eaton, who composed the music, his brother, I believe, directed the documentary, and Marcus did the, the music. And Marcus is gonna be playing in the living room on October 29th, and um, he'll also be doing Game Changers uh, in two weeks, on the 16th. And he is a tall drink of water. I call him football. He looks like a football player. He looks like he should be a football player, but he's a guitarist and a musician, and he's fabulous. Um, Yes, Christina, I know it's great. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Linda. Um, but anyway, um, that documentary I have not seen yet either, but I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I'm also, I got an invitation for an Ed Norton film to, that's screening tomorrow that, I don't know if I'm gonna make it, it's at two in the afternoon, but um, lots of screenings. We're back in screening season. I was kind of freaking out. Um, I'm in SAG after, I'm not because I'm a, working actress so much, but um, I had a little bit of a day. Thank you, Henry Jaglum and uh, Billy Crystal a gazillion years ago. Um, but anyway, um, so I get to go to these sex screenings, which is amazing, and there haven't been any for, like, I didn't go to any for like six months, and they're really few, but now it's season, and so there's screenings all the time, and it's really fun. So if you uh, like going to movies, hit me up, and maybe I can take you to one if you're in LA. Um, the doc is amazing and beautiful. Yeah, and cautionary tale. Ooh, a cautionary tale. The are you talking about the Linda Ronstadt one, Warren? I'm I'm imagining that you are. Um, uh, yeah, I like music documentaries. I'm I'm a fan for the most part. So uh, and loving Linda. What else? 
So is there anything else you guys want to talk about before? I have now been yakking for 49 minutes. Um, Linda's first Women Who Write was in June of 2010. Wow, Linda. I started in, I think it was September of 2008, so you didn't miss that many. Hi, Michael to go. Okay, so my Honda guy is on now. Michael, I love you. So if you're in the market for a new car, Gaudi Honda, I cannot recommend them highly enough. They're in Altadena. Michael DeVille is the man at Gaudi Honda. He takes the best care of me. I adore him. He will take care of you. And he's so fun. So if you have a Honda, get it serviced over there. And if you need a Honda, go talk to Michael and tell him that uh, you're a friend of mine. And Michael's going to take excellent care of you. He will anyway. Uh, oh, the Cros you said the David Crosby uh, documentary was great, Warren. I'm, s I, I'm trying to see it. I asked Marcus how I can see it. It's not playing right now. Hoping he'll get me a, a screener because I'd love to see it. Hi, Mark. Billy, um, solo show works very well. Billy, you're, you're just a lovely and supportive man, and I adore you, and thank you. I'm, I, I appreciate your support of me. I'm thirsty. I'm going to take a drink. You guys have been great, and I really appreciate it. There's more people. I keep saying I'm going to go, but like, there's more people. Um, now I'm even doing commercials. No, Sharon, I've been doing commercials for the whole show. And we've got Ralph's water. No. Uh, I actually want to put it, I don't have one here because Anson hasn't given me one recently, but if you haven't gotten Anson Williams Alert Drops, uh, check it out. Um, one night, I, after a failed date at three in the morning, and I had to drive from Malibu home, and I was really tired, and I was really nervous about it because I was so tired. I remembered that I had a tube of Anson's Alert Drops in my car, and I took two little hits, and I did it all the way home, and it really probably saved my life, and I know that they've saved other people's lives. They're really incredible. Um, and all it is is like uh, lemon peel, I believe, uh, concentrated. But you just, uh, and so it's in a little tube, and you give a little spray, and, um, but I've been waiting for my tubes from Anson, so Anson, get me my alert drops, please, because who knows, there might be another date in Malibu at three in the morning, and I might need to stay awake. Because when the date is boring, you get tired. Um, hi, Deborah. I miss you, Deborah. Come back. Come back. So I, I think, oh, Tova. Hi, Tova. Um, oh, Tova, you're so sweet. You, you like this edition. Am I writing a sequel to my book? Well, actually, um, Mary Ellen, that's a very good question. Um, I'm not writing a sequel to Don't Jump at the moment, but I am writing a screenplay about a failed Tinder romance that I had that um, I began writing with the failed Tinder romantic partner, and we were, I asked him, invited him to write it with me after we stopped seeing each other, um, because it was a very funny story. Well, it wasn't funny at the time, but it was, it's very funny in retrospect. And we, um, we wrote a like 100-page narrative something page narrative, which we spent like over a year on, and it was really funny, and we started writing the script, and then we broke up as writers, just as we had as romantic partners, and so I'm on my own now to finish it, and um, uh, that'll be the next uh, the next thing that I complete. I am going to complete it. Oh, God, I haven't worked, see, I was working on it every day, and I haven't worked on it in like two weeks, so i got to get back to it, because it's really funny, and I want to get it out there, but a sequel to Don't Jump, um, a sequel to my book, Don't Jump, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, and My Fucking Mother, available on Amazon. The audiobook, the Kindle, and the softcover. Uh, the audiobook, by the way, I recorded in Carl Reiner's Pool House. He was my publisher, thanks to Larry Oakleven and Carl. Um, and uh, if, uh, I am going to eventually write a sequel, but it's going to not be a novel. It won't be fictionalized. Uh, next time I write for reals, uh, using uh, the real name and stuff. Um, hi, Scott Krantz. Scott and I used to work together in clubs in New York back in the 80s. Uh, when I was a rock promoter, and Scott, I think, yeah, True Blue. Uh, um, the company doesn't want to be associated with 45 and Orange. What are you? Oh, the Green Cheetos. I did see them, Linda. Somebody posted them on my wall for me. Um, uh, oh, God. Who posted them for me? I'm, I'm having a, a mind. Oh. Anyway, somebody posted the green Cheetos and said he thought of me, which was really lovely. I have to pick, pull up a browser so I can see who it was, because I'm totally spacing. I saw them, I'm sorry, but they grossed me out. But I, you might have noticed that I have not 
put up anything about Cheetos since 45's been around, and I refuse. I don't have them in the house. I don't look at them. I don't think about them. After being associated with Cheetos for at least 15 years, I can't bear the sight of a Cheeto anymore. Um, he's ruined them for me, which is probably a good thing for my figure, although I need a lot more help. Oh, it was Jeff. Jeff Polk uh, put it up. Hey, Jeff, thank you for my, my, che my green Cheetos, I think. Um, they look pretty disgusting to me. I've, I've, um, I've had people send me those things about pop-up Cheetos restaurants, and I keep missing those, but I have had a couple of Cheeto products. They like wrap things in Cheetos and dust things in Cheetos, and they're absolutely disgusting as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing like a pure puff. Don't give me crunchy, give me a puff. Um, a puff. Uh, that's because I'm a smoker, that's where I go. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to wrap. We're, we're, we're closing in on, on close to an hour, and you've been lovely to stick with me. I can't believe you guys have hung out with me for this time. It's going to be kind of nice just to talk with you. Um, I used to, uh, at the beginning of uh, the show, I used to do an opening with Louise Blanker, and we used to do a chit-chat about what was going on during the week and, and anything that was pressing, um, any issues on my mind. And I stopped doing it, um, I guess about a year ago, and getting right to the guests. Because uh, one person said to me, get to the guest already! And they didn't want to hear me. They, they weren't a Facebook friend of mine or a real life friend of mine, and they just came to hear whoever my guest was that week. It was some musician. And they did not want to hear my stuff at all. So um, that it's funny how we can get 9,000 compliments, and all I remember is the one, you know, reviews. I can remember getting reviews when I was an actress, and, you know, I'd get maybe eight really great ones, and I'd get one that would say one negative thing, and that's the one that I can quote you today, 45 years later, of course. Um, you did great. Say goodnight, Gracie. <laughs> Linda's just telling me to sign off. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I have three minutes, Linda. I'm gonna close out in an hour and do like this neat little show because I'm, you know, kind of anal and compulsive and all that stuff. And so it'd be nice if it's wrapped with a little bow. Um, but anyway, um, so I stopped doing the little chit chat up top, um, filling you in on what was happening for me. And I found that when I try to start a show with a celebrity talking about whatever my issues were that week, you really, that's, that's, so I just jump into them and um, don't really have my agenda with you guys. So this was really nice. I really didn't have an agenda, but it's nice to kind of just sit here and chat with you and, and um, have this relaxed time of, uh, I didn't have to do any homework this week. I didn't have to for Lainey, actually, anyway. I just presented her at Women's Right last month, and I know her work so well. And um, I just, uh, Linda's not rushing me. I'm getting kisses now. Look at that. Um, I am signing off, Linda. It's uh, 7.58, and in two minutes I'll be gone. So if you've got anything else you want to say or want to ask, now would be the time. But if not, um, next week, next Wednesday, Pete and I will be in the garage of James Gadsden so that he can play some drums for us. He is a kick-ass drummer. Um, if you don't know who he is, look him up because his, well, you don't have to look him up. I'll tell you all about him next week. He's amazing. Um, and Lainey was great in the living room. And Lainey's, Lainey is just so much fun. And I love my phone calls with her. And I feel so blessed that I um, get to speak with her. And I wish her well. I hope she's feeling better. Um, can you spell her name wrong? Yeah, it's L-A-I-N-I-E. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, so um, I thank you guys so much for Almost everyone who's here tonight are people that show up week after week on Wednesdays and are supportive of everything that I do. And my gratitude, see I'm, I'm, I'm getting for clumped now, but my gratitude to all of you who have bought my book, Don't Jump, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll, My Fucking Mother, and then actually read it um, and have taken pictures of yourself holding the book and who tune into the show each week and who come to Women Who Write, watch it if you're not in town. Uh, get on my Facebook and like pictures and comment on my threads. Um, I'm just really grateful. I love the connection. Some of my closest friends in this world are people that I've met on Facebook. One, I've never even met in real life. Two, 
Zoe Moon and Rick Smokey, two of the closest people to me in my life for almost a dozen years, and I've never met either of them in person. Craziness right there. So um, I adore you all, and I thank you so much for um, welcoming me into your homes and into your lives. And I will see you all next week back with Pete George and James Gadsden, and um, have a wonderful week. Okay, so now I have to come back around, so I'm gonna do this, and uh, I'm gonna show you little Vicky while I turn off the camera. See y'all next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>